would not be able to make it. Okay, I can get started. Now we're recording now. <laughs> Do you want me to call I, the meeting to order? <laughs> and this is Natural Resources Committee for Oregon City, October the 14th, regular meeting. And my name is Pete Walter. Um, and let's see, our first item this evening is adoption of the agenda. And uh, committee members can move items to new business discussion from communications. If you're interested in discussion, I know that Dee, Dee hopped on to talk about something that's not on the agenda. Um, so it's up to you, Nancy, whether you want to allow that as a public comment for items not on the agenda or something something else. Um, can you do it in three minutes, Dee Dee? <laughs> oh, nothing I can do in three minutes. I can try. However, I've already bent everyone's ear for probably five minutes. Um, <laughs> but I, I, can, I can give it a try. Okay. All right, that's that's all we can ask. I do my time, but my arm hurts really bad, so <laughs> I okay. want to be here. Tell me, tell me when I'm on, and I will start this. Okay. All right. Well, not yet. Um, so, other than that, first item up: presentations for the 2019 Heritage Tree. Hey. Hello. What's that? Uh, for trees nominated on private property, and uh, first. I'm just going to do this visually from here. So the first, hi Doug. First item, first tree is Northern Red Oak at 412 Logos Street. This certificate for that, circa 1800, uh, awarded to Corinda Ingebrigtsen in honor of Shirley Ingebrigtsen. And here's the plaque. It's still got the plastic on it. So that's that. And that was nomination coming from uh, Dee Dee and Carla Laws as well. Uh, second one, no, no priority here. Just uh, second one is uh, Sugar Maple on the corner of Lynn and Holmes Lane, 901 Lynn Avenue, uh, circa 1771, we think. Um, so you can see that one as you're driving down. Here's a tree plaque. And third one is the American Sycamore at 810 Jackson Street. Um, Brian Carrier and Gretchen Nation McKillop. My neighbor. <laughs> Is that your neighbor? Yeah. Okay. The tree's like right over there. I, <laughs> I, love that. I should have mentioned that the sugar maple is Janine James is the owner too, but I haven't been able to get a hold of her. So I saw her today. Good. Um, and here's the plaque for Sycamore, so 1776. Okay, and congratulations. I know it took longer than we expected. Um, better late than never. And thanks for all of your patience as we've gotten through this. Um, I think it's, a, it's really nice to add three. I think we doubled our portfolio. Yes, we have. And <laughs> dang, this is, this is a super, super thing. It is. I think it's great. It's really nice. Uh, anybody else want any say anything about these? Well, I uh, you hear me? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I was going to say that I just wanted to compliment all those people who have done great work in trying to get these things certified. Uh, 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 Dee Dee and, Re and Lisa, I know, have been extremely active on uh, some of these efforts, and particularly Dee Dee and. I want to really thank her very much for her uh, doggedness in this effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good job. 
Yeah. Right. Uh, so next up, uh, public comment. So, Didi, do you want to? If there, if, there, if there's nothing else to speak about, yes, I would like to speak about the nomination of Park Place Park, and right. and the proposed changes to that. Um, I just want to give a little background that that's going to crack next week. For Correct. However, when I listened to the message that was given to Prack, because this is the second time it's come up to Prack. It's come up yeah. to Prack past. Now it's been brought back up to Prack a second time um, for changes. And that is why I was a little bit concerned. And during that discussion at Prack for the second time, you have proposed to take out the white oak stand there's now question about the Atlas Cedars, and there was no real mention about a couple of significant oaks, the one in distress. There was only one in distress, by the way, that was, that was of concern in the whole park. Um, back two years ago, when we started this, um, I met John Waverly, Jerry Herman, Nicole, and I always pronounce her last name wrong, but Nicole of the Clackamas, Clackamas County Water and Soil Conservation, which I probably got wrong too. However, she was up there and she is a white oak stand expert. Um, and Byron Boyce has been up there, but not with this particular meeting. So there was Myself, Lisa, John Waverly, and Nancy of Clackamas Soil Water and Conservation all up there for the original meeting about this stand. I started this with the oak that is called oak number one in the stand. And that tree is very incredible with a hole in the middle. It looks like two trees, blah, 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 blah. And it's a beautiful tree. But then I started looking around going, well, geez, we have three in our view. That makes a stand. Uh, let's make a stand. Let's, let's look at the significance of this. In the meantime, John said, along with um, our soil and conservation person, said there's only one tree that looks to be in distress. And we pointed that that is oak number two. And it's right up in there in the 300 year old range. However, it is on the Y of an old row by the toilets, up by the old probably farm road at one time. Um, but those area, that, that tree is in distress. In the meantime, during that two year period of time, Nancy, you know that we have redid the, that's, I said that wrong. We resubmitted um, the uh, heritage tree code. And then the city has also redone their code. So by watching the city, and I go to the, I watch the meetings, and by watching the, the, the city code that said by chance when a tree looks distressed or ill, they want an arbor support, fortunately, we got one on this one. That tree has an arbor support, the only tree that's in distress in the park. And it was done by Sense of Place Arborist. Nick is a fantastic guy. He's a local arborist who's done extensive oak restoration at St. John Cemetery. So he's very well versed at trees, but white oak in particular to take out the white oak stand because it is, in quotes, invasive, not accessible by the public. Um, you know, sorry, that, 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 just those two words, not accessible by public and in, covered with invasive weeds. That says Waterboard mm -hmm. Park. Waterbird Park. I'm not was sure. I've seen it. I know I'm that. over the three minutes. Boom. So now I just want to say, is that we have grants that we want to do on that property. Jerry Herman is planning to do 
you need to know the history of this. Pete, I've tried to keep even to tune to this without overwhelming you, and this is not what you want to follow up in these meetings, but this it's has exactly been what we're trying to do during these meetings, Dee Dee, is get a clear idea of the condition of the trees from the, the, the condition of the crack. trees are That's perfectly fine done do. by multiple people that know a lot about trees. John Waverly even was up there. He does know a bit about trees, but I took two other people that are experts on trees and, and several that you appreciate. And one is Byron Boyce. He evaluated the Atlas cedars. Yes. They're a very unique tree and they were definitely planted all in one and they're an extremely good health. I had the ones that looked up that are covered by invasive weeds. This is far less than even the ivy that has covered the trees in Waterbird Park, but we're planning to take that out with a grant, put hiking trails up around there, and put native camas and other underground underneath there, and possibly fence it off or put a warning sign that says, watch out, poison oak. There are, there is some poison oak around there. Who wants to get and clean out that stuff? This poison oak's been up there for probably 60, 80 years. Incredible vines. Wonderful. Do you not hurt the trees? It's in a small patch. Put up warning signs. I've been in big certs all over the place. Watch out, walking in big poison oak. You can also put up educational signs as what the whole plan was about. Edie? Yeah. So what is the invasive weed? The invasive weed is blackberry, buh, and hawthorn trees. This is not even that bad. Jerry can clean that out in one season, and then we can replant it. And I'm already looking at digs where I can go and, and free dig up like I did those 62 trilliums. I'm trying to do the exact same thing with the camas. I have a source for camas seed. Thank you very much. Let's go for it. And so does soil and conservation. It's out there if we all work together. And it's also, I really think there's, because there, it V's down, you can see right in the V, I wished I had a little yellow line I could draw around that area, but that's where the water comes down. It's always moist in there. There's no reason why we can't put a small little decorative fence up in a dog, open dog park area. Fence meaning just put up uh, d d d d pieces of wood with a little bit of hog fencing around the backside, what they have at Marius Young Park to keep dogs and people out of a pollinator garden, sensitive tree areas. There's a sign that says re the redoing this, uh, repurposing this area. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Native growth underneath it. Very easily done. And this is an area that's already abandoned by the park. Let's bring it back. This is enhancing our parks. This is what Oregon City Parks Foundation does. I, I center on heritage trees. By having a nomination of a stand, which is significant, the only significant stand of oak, white oak in Oregon City, a native, the first on the heritage tree list. We need to honor this. We just took out Myers Road, folks. Let's say, all right, look it, we're going to honor this. And we also honored all those oaks at Myers Road with oak tree replacements. We're doing great stuff. Let's continue to pat ourselves on the back and go forward with great stuff. Don't put up roadblocks and going, oh, gee, if we can't hug and kiss this tree, it's not worth a nomination. Wrong. Because I'm coming up with trees that are worth nomination that you can hug and kiss that you will probably say, ew, I don't know, it's full of bumps. I don't want that one. <laughs> I, and, I, and I'm and i talking about Atkinson Park, the Burl Park. Uh, it, it's really a cool, cool park. <laughs> and that's one of my next nominations. But this park place park is a significant white oak stand. It needs to be done in its entirety, except for oak number 02. And then we can say, the reason we didn't do this one was because the old practices of building roads. You can, you can blame it on anything. You're not going to save the tree. Be nice if you did, but it ain't going to happen. It's another one for the tree.
team, just like the pool trees. The pool trees were an atrocity, but say it took it for the team. This other one, it's not savable. That's another one for the team. But in the meantime, I've sent what it costs to military repurpose a tree to our city commission because we have local examples other than our library. The Katie? Be Good Commons, the Veterans Commons repurposed their tree there Katie. and made it into a playground. Katie. It's an expensive process. But anyway, we need to save Park Place Park there. Boom. I that's okay. I just want to get Pete's input or Laura's on on what is the status because I haven't other than I I knew you've been talking about this stand for a while, but you know I don't. Two years. I've been talking about it for two I know years that, and but keeping I don't, everyone I don't in have tune. Any idea where it exists in the hierarchy of being examined. So Pete, where where is the stand in terms of the city considering it to be a heritage? Right. Tree? So the nomination went to PRAC last month and they tabled it to this month because they wanted to get... Pete, you also speaking, it went Didi. to PRAC many months ago. Didi, can you let me okay. speak, please? All right. Um, so it's gone back to PRAC next week. And I'm just shepherding these nominations along to the advisory boards. I don't have a recommendation to remove trees. We are, they did say that they were concerned about trees that don't have visibility or access. And so what I did was take all of the information, put it in the spreadsheet, the same information you gave me, and uh, gave that to the park staff and asked them to provide further condition information on each of the trees. That's all I've done. And I am I understand that you're frustrated with the pace that this is moving, but um, you know we do need to get input from PRAC and we want their support for the nomination. Uh, the other aspect to this is that um, we are moving ahead with a tree removal policy for trees on private lands. So I want to make it very clear that there is a process in place already that reviews objectively any proposed removal of trees on city owned property. And the, you know, those trees are no exception. I understand that Heritage tree status is very important. And I think PRAC has already said they support these nominations. They did so. They just, there's been a lot more discussion about access, visibility, and that sort of thing, and condition. So these are just some pragmatic questions that PRAC wants answered before they decide. May I speak? Um, may I speak? Yeah, go down. Yeah. I'm on PRAC. Uh, the recommendation was not well received by PRAC, uh, and uh, I think it can be best praised. I mean, the argument was, we'll do the visible trees, and those are the, those that are accessible. Uh, I think Sean Dasho, which has been a PRAC member for probably longer than anybody currently is, he's he's been on, filled his term limits, sits out for two years, comes back in. His, 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 his words were great. He says, it's not about visibility or accessibility, it's about honoring the tree. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we, I was very surprised when I came to PRAC in the form it was. Um, when uh, Denise Conrad spoke, she was said, well, one of the reasons is that there are uh, areas that uh, are heavily trotted on and so forth and it might affect with root growth. Well, that was not what was presented to us. What was presented to us was visibility and accessibility. And I agree with what Dr. Sean said. It's about honoring the trees. I don't know how PRAC is ultimately going to respond to it, but those people that spoke that were on the PRAC, I think most of us had a hard problem with what was being presented by the city. I don't, my, you know, when we did the heritage tree, we changed the code and everything. I don't think we were 
thinking that if you couldn't see the tree or access the tree, that it wasn't part of a heritage tree program. A lot of the ones in Portland are on private property and in people's yards and in their backyards. And, and to me, what we're doing is we're trying to take care of the urban forest and, and we want a, an older urban forest as much as possible to retain that and to maintain the diversity. So having a wide diversity of different types of trees and, and saving big trees is to me an important part of the urban forest and that that, whether it's visible or accessible, shouldn't be part of, you know, we didn't make that as that was a rule to get a, be a heritage tree. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't the intent when we, when we put that code forward was to only have it if it was accessible or you could get to it or could see it from the road or something, because it's still part of the urban forest. May I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I was just, uh, sorry, I wasn't at the last PRAC meeting, it was the one before that, but I was, my understanding was that staff was going to do the, some, bifurcate the nomination to take some easy ones and then take more time with the more challenging ones. Is that not? That's not how, I guess maybe I'm asking Pete. I that's what my understanding. I don't know like. what park staff is going. Oh, okay. To, this is all parks. It's not. It's not me. How we will come up. We will summarize what happened and get back to you guys if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what what because that to me that all of a sudden this if, you know if they're if they're putting in it has to be accessible and public view that that wasn't the intent of the the heritage okay. at all. And yeah, I think that's an important. That's one. a really important point, Nancy. I'll uh, make that clear to Pratt next week. Good. Mm -hmm. Can I can I also ask choosing easy ones over hard ones? We've only done two. The the other one was just mandated waterboard. There was no inventory done or anything. These now would you require foot person on the ground measuring the inventory trees um so th there's how do you do one easy over the hard ones oh sorry uh, i you should were, yeah i was gonna say the, the 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 three the three three um sequoias were easy they're no they're, they're the one the harder one but I misspoke. Anyway. I was thinking because the heritage uh, nomination for Park Place Park included like 30 trees, they were going to, and some were you couldn't get to because of poison ivy. I thought they were just going to make sure that they moved the nomination forward quicker by taking the easier ones and then working on, you know what I mean? Just making sure something yeah, moves forward for, quicker. But that's null and void with Waterboard Park. Lisa, I, if I might, if I might, if I might, uh, uh, Lisa, did you look at the tape, the video of the frac meeting? Oh, Laura, you mean me? Sorry, yeah. no, I didn't. I, that's why I was asking the question. I, my in my Laura, mind, I, I, sorry, I said Lisa. Sorry. I said well, I meant Laura. But anyway, yeah, I didn't look at the frac meeting. It's not at all what was presented. Okay, sorry about. That. I was just that was in my mm -hmm. mind what I was thinking. So my yeah. apologies for adding confusion. I will. I will mute myself now. <laughs> <laughs> It's like going, like going to the corner. I mean, <laughs> Call the DD. <laughs> yeah, I think if we bring this up, because the, the, we definitely didn't intend for the Heritage Tree Program to only be trees that were accessible and or um, visible like the, the street, because, you know, we really wanted yeah. to preserve the entire urban forest. And so to hear that they're saying, well, if it's not visible or if you can't get to it, I don't care if there's poison oak around it. I agree. I mean, I'll avoid it as much as possible, but I go through poison oak all the time and then I go home and wash my clothes and take a bath and <laughs> tech new. <laughs> but, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. And we're planning to put up signage, learn what poison oak looks like. Yeah, it's a good thing for people to know what it looks like. Yeah, it is. Yes, it's it very is. very pretty. It is pretty. Yes, it is. I was shaking the vine going, what is this crazy vine? It's hard as a rock. I was hitting it. And then I took a picture and sent it to Byron Boyce and said, what is it? And he goes, oh, that would be poison oak. And I went, oh, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> well, fortunately, it was winter. And 
but I went back in spring and took pictures of it. So, you know, and I'm the very worst, allergic. The worst yeah. I ever got it was in winter. <laughs> there you go, because you can't see it. I, yeah. I dot mine in fall, but anyway, it's, but it is something that you, that's typical in our forests. It's a good thing to learn. You can, you can educate people on the symbiotic relations uh, between oak and poison oak, where you find one, you often find the other. <clears throat> there is so much to be learned here and so, so much to be given to our tip. We'll let Pete get, we'll let them get back to us with what. All right, sorry. And then, but okay, yeah. Okay, put myself back on mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where are we at? So, um, old business, the Thimble Creek, is that where we're at, Pete? Yeah, that's where we're at now. Okay. Um, Laura's got this one. All right. Um, well, I guess I'm striking out tonight. <laughs> um, so this agenda item, um, I am sorry to bring to you because it is because I had provided misinformation last time and you made a decision and I don't think it was fully based off the misinformation, but probably a piece of it was. So I wanted to come back to you again and give you the correct information because I didn't want to start a path based on something that was incorrect. So when we had talked a while ago about the overlay districts for Thimble Creek, um, we started on the path of looking at an overlay district. We did the site visit and we took a look at uh, the quantity, species, location of these trees, and then we did some research about county regulations as they relate to the trees as well. And one of the things that I said is that the city was considering code amendments to the Geologic Hazards Code that would further um, regulate trees within um, a slope category of 15 to 25 percent or within if it was within the overlay district at all not just uh, in the slope category and as it turns out um, I that is what I believed at the time but it is incorrect and so I am humbly back before you telling you I was wrong I am very sorry but um, the natural resources committee it sounded like my understanding was based on that code amendment as well as the location of species and creating a new overlay district. The direction from the NRC at the time was we should pursue heritage tree nomination instead. And also, I'm going to screen share as well, um, with the heritage tree nomination, we would look at uh, trees on the golf course, particularly we were looking at some of these and these up here, the ones on the edge being the older um, trees, more significant since there was um, some tree cutting more recently though, I think that's 30 years ago. And then at this stand up here on uh, the Hall's property and we do have um, on the phone, um, Wayne Hall in Kimberly Southworth um, with this property, the NRC said, well, these aren't all, there's a good variety, um, but really the best trees are over here. And so at the last NRC direction was to pursue um, heritage tree nomination for specific trees or groves um, over here and then over here. I just wanted to come back to you and tell you that the information that I was under the impression of was wrong and um, the code amendments do not include further regulating trees in the overlay but not in the slopes. Um, I, as staff, I would still recommend the heritage tree approach because then you're nominating or designating the specific trees that are a resource rather than the overlay district and the geologic hazards, though it would trigger geologic hazards, it wouldn't necessarily compel someone not to cut a significant tree. So this heritage tree method is a little more um, laser focused on what you want to save and um, a little bit more intentional. But um, again, I wanted to come back to NRC, have you remake that direction again because I didn't want it to be based off something which I now know is not correct. So my apologies. 
it's okay. And, and actually, I don't think it really changes how we were feeling. Because other than those really big trees on the edge and then that one piece of property that we were going to go take a tour of and go look at and we still haven't made it out there. Um, other than those places, um, I, I didn't see a lot of important trees. You know, it was mostly second growth. And other than those really big trees that had been saved you know, when they had done the clearing, they'd probably done a couple of clearings in there, I would, I would, I would guess. But so I think, still think it's those really big trees is what we should focus on saving and add those to the heritage tree. Um, and then get a tour of, of the property with that spring that they've been talking about. And, and I'd really like to see that property and find it. I'm betting, and when we were in the, looking at their other property further back on the slope that one time when we did get out there i noticed there were some bigger firs that were over that way and so we in fact i think mike and i were look there's big trees over there we should be looking over there and so i still think that may be the direction we should go laura can i ask a question sure uh i'm not quite sure um what the issue you were talking about we were we were the basic thing we're trying to do is identify an overlay district. Is that what you were saying? And we, got tied, and we got tied up in heritage trees issue, issue right? Uh, yeah, the city commission directed staff to, to work with NRC to create an overlay district. And the purpose of that overlay district was to preserve trees in that buffer area that I showed you. But as NRC got into it a little bit more, um, yeah. For a variety of reasons, overlay district wasn't the right mechanism, and the trees over there were much more significant. So we're do we um I'll I'm, after this conversation, I will um if this is where the NRC still stands, I will touch base with um, Kim and Wayne, and then the owners of the golf course property to try and get NRC members out there. Um, without a quorum um, to take a look at those specific trees as well. And then I'll go back to city commission and say, we received your direction, but we did more research and this is what we found and why. Yeah, I'd still want to go out and see that property and, and look at the trees more. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, You're not looking for a specific re a new recommendation from us at this time, I presume. We don't have a quorum, so we probably couldn't do it. Um, no, I was just looking for a head nod. Well, you have four of you, so you should have, is that, that she should have a quorum there. But I was just looking to make sure that I'm not, I wanted to pause and regroup to make sure that we still head in the right direction. Yeah, I think we yeah, are. Think so. Okay, and then I don't know if Kimberly or Wayne wanted to chat as well. Well, we don't have any comments at this point. Well, we don't know. With the inventory. We don't know what's going on. Okay. I, I mean, because we were under the impression that that overlaid part, because the property on the other side of our boundary is owned by somebody else, and that slope is not something that we don't own, or it's by owned by a different um, property owner, and um, it's not like um, the golf course where the other side of the overlay section that was designated is owned by them. So um, our situation is a little different, and the property is got a lot of mixed um, erased the species. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, and the slope, the slope's not like Cabot Hill. <laughs> if any of you know where they're at. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I've got six percent. So, you know, and we were like interested in the heritage um, tree situation for another piece, another area in our property. Uh, but it's already been designated by the Beaver Creek concept plan to be covered or to be protected. But it seems like when we got the information and everything, and then we went through the fires, which I hope all of you were yeah. like, 
and I was out there fresher washing my big trees <laughs> in the middle of the night. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're not exactly tree huggers, but we don't like to see our standing people get burned up because we do appreciate them. So um, anyway, um, the whole fire thing, because we ended up being in a level two evacuation, our focus was like totally switched. And to be perfectly honest, we're still coming back from that trauma, and it was a trauma for our family. And um, I, you know, we haven't had an opportunity to look at trees together, my brother and I, um, that we might want to nominate for heritage trees on different parts of the property. He's saying we don't know what would be a heritage tree. Well, that too. Well, um, we got those, those documents. From Laura, so that was. Uh, I never got them. Yeah, I got them, but you know, I I I do have a concern because I didn't get this um, meeting notice till like this morning. Do you guys give a little bit more notice when you're going to have um, meetings? <laughs> oh man, that's my third strike this meeting. <laughs> yeah, I forgot <laughs> to email it to you guys. Um, we noticed it a week ago, but that is again. Sorry, there's so much going on right now. I am sorry, and I uh, I will be better. No, no, you don't have to. You don't have to apologize because we've all been through a huge trauma. I don't know about people in you know the inner city of Oregon City, but I mean, you know, when your home is designated a level two evacuation, it was a mile away from level three. Yeah, yeah. and you you know, as well. we had horses, and you know things to take care of and to move and so we're still painful. That was very traumatic. But yeah, so my neighbor my neighbor's father lives in Estacada and the fire stopped at his property line. So his neighbor turned out and he's still there. Yeah. Well my brother wasn't gonna leave and we were all like freaking out. A couple of sleepless nights. Yeah. And they then, were. you know, my horses were evacuated to Amnity, and then I didn't get them back for two weeks. And when they came back, they were sick. And um, so I've had nothing but vet visits and vet bills. So it, it's been um, a real trying period for us. And so a little bit more notice on these meetings would be appreciated. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. And and the plan is still several of us wanted to come out and do the tour and look at your property and look at the trees and, and we'd love to do it with you guys. And we could look at the trees together and figure out which ones you think are really good, and which ones we think are really good and come to an agreement on what needs to be Because you guys need to be involved in this it's probably more than I do. Yeah. I well, I think that all the people all need to be <laughs> Do you is there specific? Do you need to do it? <laughs> Kimberly and Wayne, uh, we really appreciated your uh, input on that uh, trip we did make because um, the, the the stand that you were talking about was not even in our cons- in, in our consideration. It looks like it is a far better stand than uh, the other one that was uh, being proposed. So mm-hmm. we we really appreciate the input you gave us. Well, sure, we do. We do love our trees. So, and even if the stand is protected, it still would be nice maybe to put heritage tree designations on some of the trees inside of the protected stand, even. Yeah, that's what we were thinking, but you know, a little less. Yeah. Educational stands are so important. All right, so I will connect with um, both the property owner of the golf course. I talked to Rose today, and she ha- I also told them both today of this meeting, um, but uh, she had some family obligations. And so I'll connect with both of those property owners and then send an email out to NRC to get not a quorum of people out and figure out some times that work. Great. Thank okay. you.
Thank you for the direction. I appreciate it. I was going to email you and ask what happened to it, but I've been swamped. So, you know, <laughs> I put the brakes on it so I can clear this up. I'm back teaching face to face <laughs> with college students. Um, and last week I had two students who had been with somebody who tested positive and the school hadn't told them for like three days. So they had come to class and one girl had taken a paper exam and I'd been grading her exam within a few hours of her taking it. And, and it was just, I was free tested. So luckily they both tested negative and, but it's, it was terrifying. I, yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff hitting us has been pretty traumatic. Yeah. This is What's next? <laughs> oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Oh, you don't even <laughs> want to know what's happened to us. Huh. Frogs. We had a plane fly into the hangar. <laughs> oh, no. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. He, he can't tell the difference between enough space between his wing and driving along the hangar. Oh, man. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. No crashes, but pretty, pretty, you know, some some bizarre things and then our our tractor engine blew out so we had to get a new tractor oh, so, to oh. mow the lawn to mow the runway huh. right oh that's expensive yeah. yeah yeah it's 220. it is this is a horrible year <laughs> <laughs> i know i'll be glad to see this one go away yeah, I think everybody will. We all can't wait for 2021. <laughs> I'm just ready for New Year's right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. But yeah, so we, have, we could have like a little bit more notice on the um, the meetings, and um, I I think I still have the uh, documents that were sent to me earlier, and my brother and I can like look at some trees that we think are heritage trees. I'd like to save all the big ones. Maybe we can. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't care if the developer doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> or the school district, depending on who buys it. Or the homeowner that has to clean his gutters every year. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's a heritage tree. They can always pay to have it removed. Okay, you can pay to play. Yeah. Those are important nice, considerations. Nice and shady, though, in the summertime. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'll bet. And the oxygen, thank you very much. And the cool temperature, thank you very much. And the rain. I'm so glad to see the rain. Mm. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, I had I lost two of my control sites that were up above Estacada. One of them was about four miles away from from Riverside, so I know that one's gone. And then the fire went down and took the other one out. And I kept watching because my third control site is quite a ways up there. It's where Forty Two comes in, and I was watching the fire. The Riverside fire was coming from the north. And uh, apparently it was a lion's head fire coming from the south and it was literally burning toward it. I'm just like, I was just like sitting there watching every day. I'd open up the fire chart and see where the fires were. And, like, and they were still it looked like Dante's peak. Huh? <laughs> it looked like Dante's peak. It did. It, it was really scary. Did. It was, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was inferno. It really was. But, you know, the fires were still burning around that area even last week. And these last rains put them out. I looked today and there's no fires. I'm like, oh, I've got one control site. <laughs> and it could be there's still something at the other two because fires are pretty spotty. So maybe Well not just that, but you know, the, the there's there's indications that some of the fires have gone underground. You know, they're burning the roots of the trees and things like that. And so these things can crop up at any point in time if they're not, you know, tended to which I wouldn't even know how to put out an underground fire. I think they're hoping it rains enough and when it gets cold and snowy that they finally go out for good. I remember a couple of cases some time ago where the fire reignited the next uh, summer. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, well, the runway has gone from brown to green in two weeks, so. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> <thing. Good> <laughs> Yeah, plenty of oxygen going up on that graph. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, thank you guys. So what, what is our next step? What is it that you guys need from us? I think Laura's gonna try to set up a, a, a tour. Yeah. Okay. And I would assume okay. an inventory of the trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can help okay. with that inventory if you'd like. Okay. I'll, I'll be going to Summer Lake as the first week in November. Okay. <laughs> Somebody was already down there, right? Uh, yeah, one of our committee members is there. Mike, is it? <laughs> yeah, All these men and their hunting. <laughs> I'm not sure what Mike's doing. Anyway. <laughs> Are we are we continuing on then? Yeah, let's let's continue on. Thank you for for all your help, you guys. I mean, this has been really great to be working with you, and I'm looking forward to the tour and seeing that property that you're so excited about and the trees that you got there. So, okay, okay, all right. Should we move on well, to to the new business? Is it the heritage tree program budget? Is that what we're doing, Pete? Yeah, that's the next item. Um, so we have $300 a year devoted to the Heritage Tree Program, and we don't really know, we don't have a priority priority for how that money is spent. I know that we've discussed using it to pay for arborist reports, um, but I wanted to go over some of the costs of the program, and then you guys can chime in and tell me what you think. So there's some staff time, which isn't part of that budget, obviously. It's 15 to 20 hours of staff time per tree, writing reports, processing the applications and coordinating with the owners and that sort of thing. Um, and then taking that from nomination all the way to the city commission. Um, trees on public property obviously require a little more time because of the interdepartmental uh, coordination that's required. The, Plaques are $35 each. Um, the covenant, the price of recording the restrictive covenant is going up. It, uh, I know Clackamas County really raised their recording fee and for a five page covenant now is $113. And we don't normally pay for that. Uh, we did in the case of the one for the uh, Northern, uh, Red Oak because of the situation with the property owner and of limited means and that sort of thing. But that is uh, unusual and at that price, um, it is, you know, you'd run through your budget. You, you, it doesn't cover the price of two, two trees. Um, uh, certificates are part of the administrative free, freebie. Um, arborist reports vary widely, um, but our public works co staff is quoted about $250 on average for the for report. They're not always required, but they're often a very prudent step for a property owner to know what the condition of their tree is uh, so that you know they can just have that information in mind. Um, and then additional resources associated with the program include uh, holding the meetings. There's volunteer time from you all. That is significant um, publicity. And uh, we do rely on our other departments as well, other staff from other departments for input on the program. And then of course, there's a whole bunch of other non-quantifiable costs and benefits associated with it. Um, it could be, uh, it's probably reasonable that some of the costs associated with this program be borne by the property owner, since they've already agreed to assume the significant cost associated with maintaining the tree in perpetuity until it no longer can. And then preserving a large mature tree on their property um, rather than developing that property. Um, so there may be grant sources available to augment the program uh, as well as volunteer resources as well. Um, and we would encourage uh, the NRC to explore and implement any options like that. Um, so 
what if what do people think is the highest priority for this three hundred dollars that we have? Well, I think the plaques definitely should be covered by the city. Yeah. Homeowners. Um, yeah. And I would think keeping a reserve of the um, the county paperwork, I forget exactly the term that you used, uh, no, but it's already been a necessity once. So yeah, uh, it seems what's that, Chris? Sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, I, I think you said uh, we've already had to use that once out of three nominations. So it seems prudent to keep it as a reserve. Yeah. As a, yeah. Just for people who can't afford to pay for that. And would the NRC want to be involved in that decision so you know i think probably it's something that is done after the nrc's made its decision but i think it could be something that you guys are actually part of that um process let me let me ask a question Pete. yeah the three hours you're talking about does that include the arbitrage report yep um a thought uh, maybe more apply to, uh, is that same cost going to apply to heritage trees within, uh, within city owned land? Um, I don't know. That's a really good question. Um, there, um, I have, um, I don't know. We could, we can get back to you on that. We, we, there's, we'd have to ask other departments if they have resources to, to devote to it. Well, mm -hmm. Maybe even on what I'm, what I'm about to say, the, the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council has gone to the Oregon City Metro Enhancement Grant uh, Board and had secured funding to do invasive removal and so forth on city owned land. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering, I don't know if they, since, the NR, since we are a, um, a city, advisory committee i don't know if we could go to it but per, uh, perhaps uh, another entity uh, i'm not going to commit to the uh, greater Oregon city watershed council because i'm the chair but we haven't had that discussion mm -hmm. but may, maybe even the foundation uh, parks foundation would be able to secure funding uh, through that granting process to perhaps at least cover the arborist uh, efforts yeah, that is a grant program that, uh, you know, I think the NRC would certainly qualify as a committee that would be a vehicle for it. And then the city would be a, you know, a co-applicant a, a co for the grant kind of thing. So, but we would definitely want you guys to be involved in the writing of that. Okay. What, mm -hmm. um, could you double check whether NRC, because we are an advisory committee to the city, whether we we are able to apply for that kind of grant or you know of that already for a metro enhancement yeah. grant yes uh laura do you know that answer to that uh you you were in the past i don't know i heard that they were maybe retooling some of um the guidelines maybe this next year that's coming up um so we can send mm -hmm. it to you but there have been um, different boards or committees that have applied for it before and but mm -hmm. I was going to say earlier we haven't had a request to use any of that $300 dedicated funds for arborists for city trees before so we haven't there has been no budgetary requests in the past at all I don't even know that they we have the $300 so let's not tell them and okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay I understand that um, <laughs> They're not watching. The question is whether NRC could go ahead and, and secure that kind of money uh, and then that would be significant. Basically, hire the arborist even on private land that, where the property owner is making the nomination. Yeah, okay. I don't know if that's something you all can uh, explore or not. Uh, we can look into that. Um, I don't know what, it, Nancy, do you, are you aware of any other grants that might be available for this sort of thing? I'm trying to think and what came to my mind was the Metro grant too, but there's got to be some other, you know, maybe the Native Plant Society has grants. If they were native trees, we might be able to, you know, make a, mm. a, a case for, you know, that we're trying to preserve some of the 
older, bigger native trees in the city, and then we might qualify with the the Native Plant Society. Mm. I'm just I'm just thinking if it can be done in such a way that there's a there's a um, and I'm thinking of specifically the Metro Enhancement Grant, but if there's a pool of money, and so each property owner doesn't have to go through all the hoops. They, maybe the NRC or something else could uh, could actually um, bring in the arborist and then make the submission of reports. Well, and, and private property owners don't require an arborist report anymore. That was the big change. Oh, 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 okay. I, but, I guess I but if it's a, you know, after watching two huge trees in my neighborhood, like a half a block away, they went down. One went down on the 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 first storm, the big wind storm that hit. We had I had six trees in between within a block of my house. I had six trees go down. Two were substantially sized, mm -hmm. and then one of them fell right between a really nice old house and the garage. It missed the house and the garage. Mm -hmm. It was just, but and they there's, they were cutting it up yesterday. It was still sitting there weeks later, and then my neighbor, his tree, you know, that was one of his trees, and then his other tree was. He his wife was sleeping in the basement. She was so afraid it was going to fall on their house, and but then so those were had that cut down because it was not in good yeah. shape. Yeah, you know, so it's like, but they looked fine to me up until they went over. So well, I don't know. True. That was true of our sugar maple. That was a heritage tree in Oregon City that went down, yeah. and it was right. under arborist care. Yeah. yeah, just to let you guys know. Yeah. He you guys could do a policy where if you get someone who's interested in, in heritage tree nomination that maybe two of you guys go out to look at it. Though you're not arborist, you do have uh, We've done that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, we've done that. We did that to the pool trees. Nancy yeah. and I both yeah, went to the pool always trees. calls me up and goes, go look at this tree. Like, okay. <laughs> yep. And, and, and you said, looks like the flickers are doing a great job, just like yeah. the arborist did. Yeah. Well, I've also had an arborist and educated people go out to the park place thing that are oak experts. <laughs> so I'm saying we are doing want, these I want, things. I want to bring us back to topic, though. Yeah. Okay, uh, Doug. The, uh, um, so I, that might be one mechanism, and uh, Laura's saying that maybe we don't want to approach the the uh, the issues on city trees. But the point is, it's going to come up. I mean, we're not uh, we no uh, people like uh, pe people like Dee Dee and uh, uh, and uh, Lisa are nominating a lot of trees on city lands, and so I imagine uh, one of the departments is going to bulk. Uh, going to balk on wanting to pay for it, hmm. the arborist report. How much are the placards again? $35. So essentially that puts us, unless we source out their money, that gives us the ability to put plaques on less than 10 trees? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Then I say only plaque private trees. Why bother to plaque um, public trees we never have in the past? Unless there's a special one. Unless it's a special one, and if that's case, you should make an educational sign for the whole stand. Just one sign for yeah, the whole I stand. Think that's a good idea, having one sign. I mean, and, and, and actually, it doesn't happen to happen at the time of the stand. It can happen at the time of restoration and with grants for the signage at that time. We don't need a sign. All maybe we need we is... Have, maybe we need to have like a, a, a bake sale or something. <laughs> Oh, gee, doesn't that sound, gee, pie, pie, we, we've done that a couple of times. We've done two big sales. Well, they have to be, they have to be nut pies. It has to be what? Nut pies. Made, 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 made by Nest Chicago. pies. Made <laughs> and that kind of thing. I'm sorry, I'm deaf no, in one ear. I, no, I, no, I black, no you can't have a blackberry pie if it's it's for a heritage tree. Oh, it's gotcha, 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 gotcha. Well, we'll have to have elderberry pies. Oh, <laughs> Marionberry <laughs> pies. But so uh, I yeah, wonder we, if there had, is had a cake sale and yeah. and a pie sale that have gone both to our city parks, um, and we do have a gentleman who is offering two evaluations per year on city trees. That's something right there in the bank. Hey, um, Devin, what you were trying to say. Yeah, so, so just as like another idea, um, if we can't find other funding, I feel like, um, what's that cool coffee shop um, right off of um, 
Probably Springer Hill. Uh, not Springer Hill, but that's another cool coffee shop. But uh, if we had more nominations in any given year than what we had money for, we could have like a sponsor a tree plaque or something. And I'm sure we could get some community engagement oh, there. That's a good idea. And, and go to like a coffee shop, go to whatever and say like, hey, we've got a shoestring budget here, but this is a, and like we could have a little thing with a picture of the tree, story of the Absolutely. tree. Absolutely. And explain Two exactly. Your exactly. And I feel like we've got a number of coffee shops that have, mm -hmm. that it just, it, it's a, it's a, I mean, people that would donate to that gravitate to these coffee shops too. So that's another way that we could source private funding for that. Like a donation box? Yeah. Absolutely. You could have little rubber boots out called kick in for your parks. Throw your tips in a little rubber boot. Yeah. Something like that. And there's a number of ways you can do it. Good. That's a great idea, Devin. All right. Who's going to make Devin. this happen? Yeah. <laughs> what? Somebody creative. <laughs> Leads me out. Well, I think Gee, don't, don't we have to um, don't we come up with like the marketing collateral once we've got the tree that's in yeah. deficit, right? Yeah, we, so. should, we should have a, a, a tree in mind so that, you know, and maybe have it something that people could see. So, yeah. oh, we want to do this tree, but we need money to, you know, so yeah. Actually, okay, the park place tree would be a perfect one because it's a, it's a dually tree with looks like a twin or it's got heart in between it it's got a hole in it looks like two it, it looks like a set of either two lovers or two so, twins it, it, we have some significant trees that you can use as heart strings in this city sure um, i think that that's probably phase two right because we have to have the conversation about where are our sources of funding and then we have yeah. to have you know trees nominated where we go into a deficit and then we we raise money for that because you got to tell the story of the tree i'm pretty handy with photoshop if someone can get me uh, a photo and someone that has more tree experience than i am can tell the story of the tree i can mm -hmm. organize it in a visually appealing way i'm happy to yeah, that'd be do great that. will you text me i have a tree in park place park all the information for you text me i, I think we're not quite there yet okay right? yeah, i'm just so. saying i got all the information on a tree that'll work I don't doubt that. And I think that, yeah, we can definitely connect on that once, once we're, once we figured out a couple uh, of additional steps. Sounds yeah. good, Devin. Yeah, that's a really great idea. There's also, you can tie it into a, a thing down the road and which I'm trying to um, put in still is um, after we get 15 trees nominated and 10 parks, we can start talking about a series of if this tree can talk and start talking about the uniqueness of that type of tree, what it's about, what burls are about, why Oregon heritage trees, why white oaks are important, why, why a sycamore is, is significant on this spot. Um, and then you can start educating people and then they can get to it and you can make a side to it. And I think it's, we have, we have a story in the making starting. We need more we trees. We need to get more heritage trees on the yeah. docket. We need more trees. Stories. And then, you know, Portland does a really good job on the yes, website they have. With, with specific trees that you can go, the public can like do a tour of different heritage trees. And that's yes, a really good thing to do once we get to more trees. <laughs> but, we have to be, more but we have to be proactive and receptive to getting these nominations in yep. place and not fight That's each one pretty, and in their entirety. This, just this whole COVID thing, everything is taking 10 times as long as it normally does. You we know, also I, need a good hug. We also need a good story and yeah. Park Place Park is a good story. They need something up okay, there so bad. We're, we're yeah. done with Park Place for tonight. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna dismiss I'm gonna myself, guys. Me, so. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm done with Park Place. I'm gonna ask you. Bye. Uh, See you, Dee uh Pete? hello yeah is uh, is this the discussion you wanted or are there other aspects of it that you you no uh, these are really good ideas we got um i like i like the idea about the uh, sponsor heritage tree thing you know we obviously when we get more trees but if we see we're going into a deficit then we can you know start the program um and we'll have a clearer idea of what we need the money for Etc. Mm -hmm. okay. oh. Yeah, that was a great idea, Devin. 
<laughs> and I'll check out this Native Plant Society and the Metro Enhancement Grant. Um, I might look. Let me use my brains, but right now they're. Oregon and Community Trees has sometimes sometimes might have things, but I I know I'll see I'll see what they do. Right. So that'll be then up for the. Uh, we can table this for the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks, guys. Um, so that's that. On to communications. Yeah, let's go on to communications. All right. We'll start with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I have is that a lot of trees in my neighborhood aren't up anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mine too. Yep. Um, yeah, the, uh, was it, uh, uh, gentleman with property right next to the elevator had That's a tree. Bill Daniels. Bill, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, he had a lot of trouble, crashed his, smashed his house, and I didn't Ooh. see it, but a lot of damage, and Public yeah. Works, Public Works is helping remove that. It's and, actually quite surprising. I, I thought those white oaks had deep tap roots that would anchor them in a storm event like that. But yeah. Yeah. Well, that site too. You know, they're on the bluff, so there's yeah. basalt. So, yeah, basalt. I don't know. If there's. Yeah. It's it's amazing. I mean, some you look if you walk down the promenade, you'll find this one very large white oak, and it's it's root. It looks like those roots are just in a very very narrow crevice. Mm in the basalt. But yeah. Yeah. That, that's what, it, uh, really shallow. That it was, was a really it was a really big windstorm. We've had a couple of really big windstorms and they still have their leaves on. And usually we get those kind of winds in the winter when yeah. the trees are bare and so they don't have the extra weight of all the foliage. And that was they knew that was going to be an issue when the first windstorm yeah. came up. So Yeah. But yeah, it was still just a shock, complete shock, the trees that went down. Well, I've got a communication that's in the form of a question to Pete. Yeah. Uh, do you know offhand if the Friends of Trees are going to do this pro uh, program again this coming year, or is it just too early or not? Um, they are, what they're doing, good question. Um, they emailed us uh, two weeks ago. They are training um basically what they're doing is they're not doing community planting events they're doing plantings they're still doing plantings you can still sign up for a tree but it's only the trained coordinators that come that do the work so they you know they're training everybody in COVID protocol and then they send them to the property and they plant the tree um so but you can sign up to get trained so that you can you can do a couple of plantings and that's something that's going on. I'm signing up for it too. So, yeah. Yeah, I got a flyer in the mail if I wanted to plant a tree and I, I was laughing going, if they can find a place to put a tree on my property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of full. Like <laughs> so, yes, and I would be happy to email you more details about that. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I have an item that I wanted to bring up, which is the OC20 community discussion. Um, we could have that as a group. Uh, I was actually kind of hoping that uh, more of the members would be present, but I'll have to reach out to them individually. Um, um, yeah, sure, Chris. Do you want? Yeah, but yeah, if if just the four of us uh, can agree on a time, yeah, it, it should take anywhere between a half hour and an hour, depending on how impassioned you're feeling that day. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, perhaps I could just follow up after this discussion. Um, yeah, so we need not. Maybe send you know, an email to everybody time. and figure out what times work best. Yeah, yeah. and if, if you need the city to host that, you know, I can give you the Zoom account details. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, actually that would be great because I have another one coming up and yeah, we created a second account just for the community conversations so that people can use it. Excellent. Yeah. And that I'll makes that, up on that then. and that would allow you to be the host and not us. Yeah. 
Having Chris, if, if you're going to coordinate schedules, I would take a look at Doodle, D-O-O-D-L or whatever that is. Just that'll Doodle. make our, everyone's life easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Although um, when you do set those up, I mean, there's no limit to uh, the parameters for the times and dates. So is there a general idea that you all have of, of time that you have available, like the weekends, the Saturday or Sunday you all have available? Yeah, if I can do weekends, I probably could do Fridays too, but weekends, yeah, weekends. is probably the best. Monday, yeah, evening, Monday evenings and Thursday evenings too for me in general. Gotcha. I can and do Thursday evenings, but not Mondays, so. Cool. Thursdays are Except out for me, but weekend evenings probably, um, I don't know, I'm hit and miss right now on my schedule, so. Okay. On the subject of timing, you know, now that we're doing virtual meetings um, and our meeting venue, if we do start meeting face to face again, our meeting venue will change to the new public safety building. But we would no longer be competing with library board, at least for the foreseeable future. So I wanted to ask you all whether or not you've wanted to hold the meetings earlier. Hmm. at least for the zoom time that we're doing that would be cool i'd yeah. be okay with that yeah six six would be okay with that would yeah. six work better yeah. great yeah. that's it's rough when we get off at nine on these things yeah it's a little late so yeah okay Four thirty is really early in the morning let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right yeah, I, oh i, I know about four thirty. <laughs> I thought I thought we were gonna get get out at eight based on our uh, agenda, but <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> never eight, Doug. It seems like it's nine always. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Any um, communications from anybody? Let's see. Well, our comprehensive plan prog program has been been affected like everything else, yeah. as far as timing um the grant that was that is covering the bulk of it is a little delayed from odot but um they have uh they have got it up and running now and they've so i believe they've select they're selected the consultant for but i'm not allowed to make it public so <laughs> odot controls all the grant funding for that and uh when we know more i'll I'll update you on that. But we're still in the community, community conversations phase. Mm -hmm. We've gotten over 750 responses on the survey. Right. Um, we're about to send out 4,300 questionnaires to multifamily properties with a, um, and they can enter for a gift card if they, if they do the survey. So mm -hmm. that'll be hitting mailboxes very soon. And uh, so I think we're getting good feedback. And in the next uh, project advisory team meeting will be coming up here on um, on the 28th. And we're gonna be giving preliminary results from the survey and the community conversations that have been held so far. For the visioning. That's all I have. Laura, do you have anything? I do not. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate the, the the volunteerism and your dedication. I really do. No, well, thanks, Laura, for staying for the long meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thank you, as always, for coordinating these. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Hey. I'll say goodbye. Stay okay. safe, everybody. Yep. We'll see you guys next month. Well, actually, maybe we'll see you earlier if we get to have a tour, but you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay.